Yeah. <laughs> Move my purse. <laughs> good morning, Madam Chair, or good afternoon, pardon me, and members of the committee. Uh, I think we've got sound sufficient. Yes? You can hear in the back? My name is Nathan Sanderson. I'm a policy advisor to Governor Dugard, and I'm also uh, listed as the agency project sponsor uh, for the independent review of big game management. Uh, briefly, if you recall, about a year ago, Governor Dugard initiated this independent review. Uh, really, the purpose was to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the department and its current management system for big game. And then really probably the more important part is to provide recommendations for improving that system. Uh, the governor believed that it was really pretty important to have a third party conduct the review so that there'd be uh, confidence in the results so that the public would know that uh, the governor is serious about making sure that we did this the right way. Uh, if you recall, about a year ago during the October 2012 uh, commission meeting in Deadwood, former policy advisor to the governor, uh, Jason Gloat, announced a plan for the review and then we sent out a request for proposals that fall that was due by the end of the year, it was due December 31st, 2012. We, re we received four bids uh, in that request for the pr four proposals. Last March, I presented uh, to the Game, Fish and Parks Commission uh, the governor's recommendation to have Wildlife Management Institute conduct the review. Uh, WMI began work on April 1 of this year, and then they delivered their report prior to the deadline, uh, which was October 1, just a couple of days ago. You know, when Governor Dugard selected WMI to conduct the review, I was really pretty confident at the time that we'd made the right choice. You know, it was very clear from the proposals that WMI had uh, ample experience conducting reviews. I think 70 different reviews they've conducted similar to this. They had a really solid proposal, a pretty impressive staff. But I'd say after working with them for six months, I'm even more confident that we selected the, the right folks. The, the staff at WMI was really good to work with. Uh, they're very responsive. We've had excellent communication, I think, throughout. Um, from the outset, we knew that there would be pretty considerable public interest in the review, and WMI really brought some good ideas and recommendations for ensuring that anyone who wanted to provide any input had an opportunity to do so. Uh, I'd say just in sum, all in all, they've, they've operated in a very professional manner, so certainly appreciate that. Uh, yesterday, Steve Williams, who's the president of WMI, and Scott Williamson, the vice president of WMI, briefed the governor, uh, myself, chief of staff, and others on the findings from the review. Overall, I think I'd say that the governor's pleased with the report. Uh, he believes that, in general, Game Fish and Parks is doing a good job with the resources that they had. Can improvements be made? Absolutely. We're always striving for improvement. That's part of the reason why the governor commissioned the review. But uh, I'd like to read one quick excerpt from the report that uh, WMI is going to present to you in a minute. On page three of the review, the, they mentioned that the Department of Game Fish and Parks, quote, has a strong and well-established management program that appears to meet the needs of their department, hunters, and landowners of South Dakota, unquote. And uh, I, I think that that is a pretty good summation of uh, how the department has operated in the past, albeit knowing that we're still going to have some things to work on uh, moving forward. Later on, I believe uh, Secretary Vonk is going to talk about the action plan to address the recommendations in the review. Uh, but for now, I'd like to introduce uh, Steve Williams and Scott Williamson from WMI to pre present their findings. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, thank you very much, Nathan. I appreciate those, uh, your kind remarks. Um, as we go through this, uh, what I'm trying to do here today is, is to prevent, uh, present an overview. Um, the, the report itself is uh, somewhere around 100 pages or so, and, and there's a uh, obviously a fair amount of detail and some um, real technical information in there that uh, I, I'm sure will be of interest to you. But today, uh, I'm going to follow the, the presentation here, which is uh, the order of the presentation is very similar to the table of contents of the report. And as I said, uh, in the interest of time, I'm only going to highlight report findings and recommendations and uh, certainly allow time for questions at the end. Uh, quickly, Nathan mentioned uh, a few things about WMI, but by way of introduction, we were founded in 1911, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, really uh, in an interest of improving the wildlife profession. Uh, in the history of WMI, we've been uh, instrumental in, in pr uh, putting together academic curricula early on in the 30s and 40s. Uh, we have published uh, 
some 40 or so books, uh, textbooks on, on uh, wildlife conservation, wildlife management. Uh, we've been involved in natural resource policy development at the federal level uh, for, for many years. Um, and also, uh, again, as Nathan mentioned, we've done a number of similar reviews, uh, actually more than 70 in the history of, of WMI, looking at programs uh, and making uh, uh, some recommendations on how we can improve them. So we approach this project the same way we have any others, and that's to be fair, to be objective, um, with an eye toward improving a good thing. And, and South Dakota has a good program. Uh, but certainly there are ways they can improve. So that was the uh, approach that we took. The team uh, in involved six, uh, uh, six individuals uh, collectively with more than uh, 100 years of experience at state and federal agencies, uh, experience ranging from uh, on the ground survey research analysis, population modeling, and into uh, administrative positions within uh, actually nine different agencies that uh, you'll see listed there. Um, so with that, uh, I'll just mention a bit about our methodology. We uh, had seven different ways of, of, of trying to understand uh, what it was that, uh, or how the big game program in South Dakota uh, functioned. We directly communicated with approximately 280, uh, 280 individuals uh, within the state. That includes uh, citizens, uh, department staff, uh, I think all of all of the commissioners that are here and then some uh, past commissioners um, we had uh, we reviewed uh, somewhere around two thousand uh, two and a half two thousand five hundred docu documents that we uh, requested uh, from the department um, we held three public listening sessions in Brookings Pier and Rapid City we conducted interviews with uh, s uh, some individual stakeholders uh, interviews three days of uh, uh, interviews with department staff, 24 members of the staff. Uh, and then uh, finally, in an effort to reach out to other folks involved in the big game management program, we uh, provided staff questionnaires to all the conservation off officers, uh, wildlife damage management specialists, and, and regional biologists. Um, let's quickly go into the results. Um, the review of the documents that were requested from South Dakota uh, revealed that there, the uh, program itself and the administration uh, uh, of the program by the department were very similar to other states in which we have worked or had knowledge of. Uh, the documents and comments we heard at public lis listening sessions really provided uh, an excellent source of information for us as we started into this project to figure out, uh, you know, what questions we need to ask uh, and where we needed to uh, uh, delve into uh, a little bit more. Uh, with respect um, to uh, public input, we had um, we received comments uh, from, as you can see, or I won't read through it, but commissioners, department staff, members of the public, and quite a few folks. Those comments uh, ranged, uh, largely dealt with big game management, but as you might guess, they ranged um, to a lot of other areas that, that we did not, that were not within the scope of our, our review, so uh, we didn't follow those. But <clears throat> we heard things like, um, um, you know, there's, there's a dissatisfaction from some, some folks with the preference system for big game tags, uh, con obviously concern about mountain lions, both, if you will, pro and con. Uh, we heard folks talking about uh, big game crop and livestock uh, depredation programs, um, deer and elk numbers too high, too low, similar to, I'm sure, what, what you all hear uh, at commission meetings. The Public listening sessions uh, we conducted during uh, the week of May 13th. Uh, so several of you folks, I think, uh, we actually met with, with uh, well, a few of you at that meeting. Uh, we collected input anonymously, and we never asked anyone names. Um, we provided questionnaires to each one of the uh, folks at, uh, at the, the uh, listening sessions. We had 45 total people that came, 37 returned returned uh, questionnaires and just again to name maybe three or four sort of general comments just so, so you're aware um, we took away from both the questionnaires and the listening sessions that people are generally confident uh, that the department technical staff is well qualified uh, does a good job and generates uh, solid scientific data um, 
Uh, another comment that was pretty common, deer and elk populations and harvests have been fluctuating wildly, and the department needs to work on making them more consistent. Uh, another example is uh, most people express confidence, particularly here in this part of the state, uh, express confidence with the recent aerial elk survey and that, that that survey was accurate. So in the report, you'll see a, a more thorough listing of the comments that we received. Uh, during uh, uh, our review, we established, uh, at the beginning of our review, we established an email account uh, and uh, the office of the governor advertised that, publicized that, as did the department. We accepted any and all comments, either from email or um, uh, from letters that we received. And we've got about 20 of those comments. Um, uh, some of those comments were staff comments, some were uh, the general public and so on. And again, uh, in the report, you will see a little more in depth on, on the, what those comments were. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we conducted department staff interviews. Uh, they were conducted the week of June 24th. Uh, the interview responses were kept confidential in order to encourage honest and frank discussions. Uh, we carefully considered staff comments as we developed our findings, uh, recommendations, and conclusions. Uh, you can see the topics we discussed. Again, I'm not going to read those. Uh, they're on the screen. But we, uh, we, we covered a wide var variety of topics. Um, and had the opportunity to meet and question face-to-face -face, uh, those folks, uh, particularly that are involved in the technical aspects of setting uh, season recommendations and license numbers. Um, as I mentioned, we surveyed 82 regional staff. Uh, we, um, there are certainly ge geographic differences in responses. Uh, certainly, you know, folks in the east, you know, they don't have responsibility, obviously, for mountain lions and elk. But um, uh, our sample size, even though we, we sent out 82 samples, we had a 70% response rate, which is pretty good in terms of uh, survey responses. Uh, sample sizes were too small to conduct any uh, real rigorous analysis by region. Uh, there was a mixed response with respect to, um, uh, I should say, some mixed responses with respect to guidance and direction provided. Uh, by uh, department senior staff, although most, um, uh, most staff that return the surveys express a, a level of confidence in, in senior level guidance. So um, some folks didn't think maybe they got enough, but when they got guidance, they, they were confident in that guidance. There was a strong agreement among staff for the need of measurable population objectives for management plans, and we'll talk about that more. Um, uh, and I guess, again, in the interest of time, there's a more thorough uh, discussion of results, a presentation and discussion of results uh, uh, in the final report. Uh, getting into sort of the, the meat of the matter and the findings and, and recommendations. In general, WMI found that deer and elk management plans were outdated and developed primarily by staff with some public input uh, um, but as you can see, some of those are, are quite a bit outdated. Management plans uh, lacked well-described population objectives and time frames to, to achieve those objectives. However, uh, as evidenced by mountain lion, the mountain lion and pronghorn plans, ma the management planning process is improving. Uh, and we certainly recognize that and want to make sure uh, that folks uh, understand that. Uh, the recommendations, uh, you'll see there again on the screen, we recommend that the department and commission place a greater emphasis on management planning with specific and measurable population goals expressed as, as ranges, not as points. So instead of 100 critters, 75 to 125 or so on. We recommend that, uh, that you use human dimension research and third party facilitators to engage the public in contentious issues, uh, um, contentious issue resolution like the management of mountain lions, deer, and elk uh, here in the Black Hills. Uh, moving to public participation, uh, what we found was that the department uses a variety of means to encourage public participation and outreach. We heard uh, at, at, I think at each of the public listening sessions that the public appreciates those efforts uh, in, in the outreach that the department and the commission um, uh, do throughout the year. It appeared that outreach to landowners and sportsmen and women was the highest priority of the department. We also found that human dimensions research could be improved and what we believe would aid in decision making. 
So our recommendations, again, the highlights are as follows. Uh, we recommend the department increase its use of social media, uh, its use of uh, emails that are collected um, through the website to inform the public, public about its actions and, and, and opportunities. We encourage full support of the human dimension capability that resides within the department. Uh, we also recommend a longer uh, term comprehensive management system, and I'll talk about this in a little more detail, that would allow staff, the commission, and the public to understand the impact of the regulations process. We, we think um, and, and offer for your consideration um, perhaps a, a, a different way of approaching the responsibility that you have. Um, and I'll touch on that later. The commission uh, recommendation development process, I'm, I'm sure you're all aware of that. Uh, it's a process, uh, it's a formal structured process intended to provide participatory management throughout the department. Uh, we believe the social aspects of that decision making, there's biological and social and, and there's others, but uh, we believe uh, that we found the social aspects of decision making are based on anecdotal and opportunistically uh, data opportunistically collected by field staff. Landowner tolerance for big game impacts appears to be uh, a or the major driver for the recommendation process. Uh, we think to, or we found that inconsistent guidance for regions and regional staff uh, hampers the process from time to time. And although very well intended, uh, we believe the process to be time consuming and perhaps a, a bit uh, cumbersome. We heard, uh, this is the second slide of uh, on findings, we heard on a few occasions uh, at public listening sessions uh, and an in input we received uh, through email or um, through regular mail, uh, we heard that, quote, the numbers change, unquote, between the field and senior level staff and peer. We took these allegations or, or the, these claims or perceptions very seriously in, in our review. Uh, we were first concerned that reference to numbers, again, quote, unquote, uh, might have referred to uh, population survey information that was collected in the field. We found no evidence that that occurred. Uh, we did find out that on occasion, license or season recommendations, the numbers that people recommend for licenses, for instance, um, uh, the recommendations from the field were modified during the commission recommendation development process uh, due to policy decisions perhaps uh, or, or different policy directions. Changes in individual recommendations from field staff uh, are not uncommon in other state agencies that, we're, that we've worked in or are aware of. Uh, what we believe is critical here, what was, we found was lacking uh, was adequate feedback mechanism to explain the senior level decisions to field level folks. They're participating in the process, but the feedback loop to let folks know why, quote, the numbers changed, unquote, why that happened. Uh, this feedback is, is crucial uh, for participatory management. Uh, our recommendations, uh, you'll see here, uh, we recommend that prior to any regulatory, big game regulatory uh, decision making during this, this process that sideboards, if you will, uh, policy sideboards be presented to uh, all members of the field that are involved in the decision making process up front. So they're aware of, again, aware of the sideboards when they make their individual recommendations. Second, uh, we'd recommend that some minimal thresholds be um, uh, identified so that there's not a lot of time, you don't spend a lot of time and, and effort uh, making a change uh, to license numbers, for instance, of 5% or 10%. That's, there's enough noise in the system that that's not really gonna have a major impact. So we think that would improve uh, the process. Uh, and as I said, we recommend that a standardized feedback mechanism um, be applied so that when a decision, or a, a recommendation an individual in the field makes up through uh, the region uh, into a senior level staff at Peer, uh, if, if that recommendation is consistent with the final recommendation, everything's fine. If it's, if it's changed for some reason, um, and again, that's not unusual uh, in any state that I've ever worked at or the other states we've worked in, that, that individual 
uh, have it uh, uh, be given um, a rationale or an explanation uh, for that change. Um, we also have a section on our report dealing with roles and responsibilities. I'll, I'm going to touch on this very briefly. Uh, we outline the pros and cons of the specialist versus generalist conservation offer, officer uh, with respect to big game management surveys and management. Um, we address findings that some individuals perceive that, the agent, that agency leaders and commissioners are overly influenced by special interests. Uh, none of the opinions expressed, again, were unique to South Dakota. In fact, uh, they are common in any large organization, whether it be a, a fish and wildlife agency or, or some other organization. We, did, uh, we do provide some recommendations uh, in the report. Uh, again, the highlights are uh, with respect to roles and responsibility of staff associated with big game management, we'd recommend that annual training workshops uh, should be conducted for all staff uh, involved in big game surveys. Uh, while they're doing surveys, that should be their primary responsibility, not a secondary responsibility. Uh, we recommend that senior level staff uh, do a better job of communicating the goals, the objectives, and providing feedback throughout the agency. And we recommend that the department and commission review the current regulation development process to reduce time spent and to reduce cumbersome activities uh, that are focused on short-term objectives. This would allow more time for long-term and more important policy issues. And I just summarize that quickly as saying, from our perspective, uh, what we saw was there was a lot of time spent on the urgent uh, rather than the important. So we would suggest you consider kind of stepping back and saying, do we have to do all, every regulation that we do uh, uh, each year annually, or are there opportunities to set a regulation for a three-year period, say, or a five-year period that would give you all uh, uh, a little more time to think about, in particular, management planning and where do we want these species to be uh, five, or, five or ten years down the road. And again, th there's uh, a lot more detail in the written report. Switching now to the four species that um, we were asked to, to uh, uh, review. Uh, relative to deer management, uh, the deer management program, as I mentioned before, uh, needs management plans that contain specific population range objectives within a specified time timeline. These population objectives should include measures, we believe, should include measures of herd quality and landowner tolerance. We believe that data analysis units that uh, are, are being used um, to some extent today uh, data analysis units that combine counties would provide more precise data, more statistically valid data uh, than they do, than at less expense uh, than what uh, the current um, uh, use of county data uh, provides. We also recommend that additional biostatistical support is needed to enhance the deer management program. We see process, uh, progress being made. Um, uh, the folks involved in that program have tremendous skills and abilities. They have a lot on their plate, uh, and we think that some additional support uh, for those folks uh, would, would really um, uh, increase the trajectory that, that, that we saw uh, in, all, in terms of the sophistication of big game management in, in uh, South Dakota. Two slides on elk management. Uh, the elk management program has similar needs to the deer program. The elk management plan needs to contain uh, specific population objectives with a time bound uh, and, and with a specified timeline. Uh, we believe these population objectives should include, again, measures of herd quality and landowner tolerance. Uh, we recommend that the department and commission consider a system plan for deer, elk, and mountain lions in the Black Hills. It, would, it, uh, it should consider the interactions between available forage livestock, deer, elk, and mountain lions. Uh, that plan could allocate forage between livestock and the native ungulates, deer and elk, and establish measurable and quantifiable objectives for range condition and population levels uh, for deer, elk, and lion. Um, it, this is a complex system that's being, that, that you all are trying to manage uh, within the Black Hills, doing it individual species by species, um, we don't believe is the most effective uh, way to accomplish that. 
The uh, second slide here, our report recommends that the department should seek additional, again, additional biostatistical support uh, to develop out population models. And we described the uh, characteristics uh, of those population models in our report. Moving to pronghorn antelope management, um, uh, WMI recommends that the department and commission establish unit specific population objectives, again, that are measurable and time bound. We recommend using historical data uh, that the department has collected to develop a winter weather severity index that would help model pronghorn populations. As you uh, know, well know, pop, uh, pronghorn populations are heavily influenced by uh, winter weather severity. Uh, we're aware that there's a historical uh, database, survey database on popula pronghorn populations, um, and it's not uh, difficult to go back and look at winter and develop a winter severity index to help um, uh, estimate pronghorn population sizes and to set uh, season and, and um, season lengths and, and license numbers. Finally, uh, again, just hitting the highlights on mountain lion management, uh, we would uh, recommend that the department clarify that its mountain lion population objective. Uh, should clarify its mountain lion population objective to ensure a common frame of reference for the department, the commission, and the public. Big game population levels are dynamic throughout the year and without a standardized reference, department staff and the public will be, continue to be confused when reporting population numbers. We, we recommend an inclusive stakeholder process that engages competing stakeholders, and I talked about this a bit before, when developing the next lion management plan. Um, uh, we provide an example in our report of Montana when they put together their wolf uh, management plan uh, and the, the, um, the effort involved bringing in, comp let's say competing interests, competing uh, view, viewpoints and opinions on how to manage wolves. Uh, a third party convener or facilitator uh, worked with all the interest groups uh, and developed a a consensus on a wolf management plan, which is uh, uh, perhaps as contentious as, as mountain lion issues here in the state of South Dakota. The, that's the highlights of the findings and, and, and our recommendations. The request for proposals had nine specific questions uh, uh, that we were to answer uh, for the Office of the Governor, uh, as part of our contractual um, responsibility. What I'll do here for the next few moments is go through each of those very quickly, I hope, um, and uh, uh, tell you our, our perspective and, and our recommendations. The, uh, the full report uh, includes much more detail, as I said before. Question number one refers to the structure of big game hunting seasons. WMI believes the current structure provides a sound basis for management. However, we recommend that the department and the commission review that structure uh, and evaluate ways to reduce the complexity of license types uh, and allocations uh, as part of uh, your work in developing a, a new deer management plan. Question number two addresses big game management planning. Uh, again, WMI recommends is an integrated system for the Black Hills that incorporates deer, elk, mountain lions, and habitat objectives. Outside of the Black Hills, we recommend that the department develop uh, a deer management plan uh, that reduces the complexity uh, uh, that, that currently uh, resides there. Uh, and would also, we, we suggest or recommend, uh, of, there are ways to reduce the frequency that the commission has to take annual regulatory actions. Again, focusing on the important, uh, perhaps, rather than uh, the urgent. Question number three referred to management and harvest surveys. Uh, we believe that the harvest surveys do provide a sufficient foundation for big game management. Uh, and actually, we were, we were quite impressed with the level of effort and the uh, uh, precision of those surveys. However, uh, as with all things, there's evidence of and room for improvement. Um, and again, we would recommend that the uh, department seek ad additional support, um, biometric or statistical expertise, uh, to continually improve the harvest surveys. Uh, question four de deals with uh, uh, 
asks, is there sufficient financial and staff resources for big game management? Uh, I can tell you that there's not a state in the country that thinks they have adequate resources to manage any species of wildlife. Uh, uh, but uh, we do think that, that the resources are there. Uh, and recognizing that funding is finite and in some places uh, obviously decreasing, uh, we uh, recommend the department uh, take a look at the recommendations within this report uh, and those that, that uh, they want to adopt to assign priorities to the actions identified uh, by, the, by the department. And then, and this is the, the difficult uh, thing to do, I understand from being in administrative positions, uh, provide uh, staff support and staff time uh, to address the priority actions within reasonable uh, time frames. In other words, um, there are uh, very skilled and knowledgeable uh, staff working within the department that are very busy and, and doing excellent work. Um, and, and Jeff can grapple with this because it's easy to say, but uh, somehow if, if you can find time uh, to, to set those folks down uh, to think again long term rather than what do I got to do this week to get ready for the next week. Uh, I think continuous improvement is an important goal and with that kind of effort, uh, uh, I think you know, this would, the increase in efficiency and increase in um, the effective, effectiveness of big game would jump up several levels uh, fairly quickly. Um, question number five was, was somewhat related, well, it was related. Uh, it asks if financial resources for scientific research is properly allocated and does that research uh, contribute to big game management. Um, we we uh, believe strongly that the research that has been conducted and contract, contracted by the department is well designed and, and uh, is a, a, uh, entirely appropriate um, uh, to assist in, in big game management. Uh, we, we would recommend that you consider uh, looking at uh, additional uh, research institutions and perhaps a broader range of experience outside of the department. Uh, we noticed that there was a, a, a lot of research being done by South Dakota State University. We think that research was very well done, uh, uh, adds information uh, that decision makers need, uh, but al along the lines of population modeling, we're aware of some other uh, uh, research ins or, uh, universities that are conducting research that might be um, uh, beneficial to reach out uh, to those other universities to pull in their expertise as you develop uh, population models for deer, elk, uh, and pronghorn. Uh, question number six, uh, address the survey and research data with respect to season recommendations and management plans. Uh, we believe this is the most critical weakness uh, of the big game management program uh, as it currently stands. Survey and research data does, does inform recommendations with respect to achieving pronghorn and mountain lion management plans. The lack of a current deer and elk management plans and populations and population objectives within those plans uh, precludes the ability uh, of the department or the commission to make this decisions because the population objectives don't exist. Deer and elk hunting uh, recommendations appeared to WMI to rely heavily on anecdotal landowner and hunter input collected in an opportunistic manner rather than by any formal structured approach uh, that is transparent to the public and lends itself to scientific analysis. Let me pause for a second here. Um, the work that uh, department field staff does interacting with landowners and sportsmen and women and other folks in the state is absolutely critical. Uh, um, the information they gather is important. Uh, however, there are uh, using human dimensions and, and scientific surveys and polling, uh, we believe that you would be better served by having that information along with uh, you know, what you hear uh, from your constituents and neighbors, having that information so you have a, a, a better perspective, a more scientific perspective on what public opinion is with respect to big game populations across the state. So um, we're not saying don't have field staff talk with their constituents, with their landowners, with their sportsmen, not at all. Continue that, it's important, uh, but there are other ways to gather public information um, that provides you much more accurate uh, information with respect to 
to uh, public opinion. Uh, follow up on, still on question number six, uh, the lack of a structure, this, this re relates to um, uh, harvest management and, and recommendations. We believe that a lack of a structured approach uh, with a well-documented and quantifiable decision-making process impairs the department's ability to adaptively manage uh, species. Um, what we found out in our interviews and, and through uh, looking at documentation is that department staff uh, do their best and, and work hard to, to make sure that all the information is brought together uh, from the field staff through the regions, again, to the, to the Pierce Central Office. But we found, uh, and I would say perhaps particularly in the DEER program, that it was difficult to um, determine what drove license number, license, numbers, license number recommendations year to year. And it was difficult to, to uh, um, determine if there was any learning going on year to year. If that makes, well, let me try to make that make a little more sense. Um, most of us, when, when we were involved uh, firsthand and had direct responsibility for managing deer populations, have an algorithm or an equation, if you will, a model that we put information into year after year after year. We uh, project what harvests are, what harvests are going to occur. If they do occur, then we then we learn something. We learn more by our mistakes. If you have a structured process each and every year, um, and we didn't see that within, as I said, particularly within the deer management process, it, it appeared to us that um, it was more subjective than than necessary. And I would say it appeared to me in particular that there was a, a lack of learning opportunity year to year to year. And I'd, I'll move on. If you have question, more questions about that, I'll expound later, and, and we certainly do within the report. Um, finally, we recommend, and I touched on this, that the department provide adequate time and resources to key staff to develop management plans, robust population models, and adaptive harvest management recommendations that will achieve the population objectives in those management plans. Moving to uh, question seven, uh, that question referred to uh, staff input to the season setting process and, and department oversight uh, of, those, of that whole process. The, uh, we believe the current system provides for extensive opportunity for staff participation. Uh, however, again, uh, the lack of management plans in particular for, for uh, deer and elk uh, and, and perhaps an inconsistent guidance uh, hampers uh, the effectiveness of that, st that staff input. Feedback to field staff must be improved so they understand why decisions were made, either consistent uh, or inconsistent with their individual recommendations. Uh, still, again, on question seven, uh, we recommend that the department provide additional direction at the beginning of the season setting process to establish appropriate expectations and understanding of policy guidance uh, by their field staff. Upper level staff and the commission need to improve both the frequency and content of communication to field staff and the public with respect to how their input is considered and factored into final decisions. Uh, we believe that higher level policy issues such as season structure, uh, when and if multiple tags per, per license should be used, uh, the preference system perhaps, a manner of take restrictions and so on, should be addressed on a multi-year basis, again, maybe three to five years, uh, rather than annually, to provide you all uh, in the department more time to focus on some uh, other important issues. Question eight uh, addresses the information provided to the commission for decision making. Um, our interviews with department staff and commission members, uh, yourself, indicated that uh, to us that the commission members were provided sufficient biological and social information prior to, prior to making their decisions. But a number of you expressed that there's so much information that it's difficult uh, to find the time to go through all that. Uh, so um, so the, the, the information is there. 
Uh, however, again, we question the, uh, the validity, validity uh, and inclusive nature of some of the social information that you use as, as you make these decisions because, uh, the way it was, because of the way it's been collected uh, and uh, opportunistically rather than through a human dimension research approach which would provide um, scientifically valid information that could be shared with the public. And finally, question nine, the last question we were asked to address, uh, refers to public input into the big game management plans. We found that the department goes to great lengths to provide opportunity for public participation, open houses, public meetings, meetings like this, website information, and so on. Um, However, again, the lack of clear plans and objectives may contribute to the perception of some that the department is not responsive to citizen interests. WMI recommends that the department and commission develop and employ more objective management planning processes to reduce the controversy associated with uh, and improve the effectiveness of management of big game, particularly elk and mountain lions. I'll conclude with just a, a, few, a few more slides. We entered this uh, uh, effort to identify in general, or generally, the strengths and weaknesses of the program and to suggest ways that we felt that program could be improved. So I'll conclude with uh, a slide on the strengths and weaknesses and then two general overall conclusions. First, uh, uh, there is no question in the mind of any of the six team members that staff within the South Dakota Department of Game and Fish, Game, Fish and Parks uh, was comprised of very knowledgeable and very dedicated wildlife professionals. Uh, staff understood the importance of combining biological information with landowner and hunter desires to manage big game. The department has been actively in, in, engaged in scientific research to help answer questions that would improve the science behind population management. Again, no question there. The department has openly embraced public participation and communication in order to engage the public in their decisions. And I'll just pause there for a second. I, was, I came away with the, the, the impression that South Dakota is doing way more than any state that I ever uh, managed, <laughs> which was uh, an embarrassment to myself. So, I mean, I think that, that the department really accepts this, uh, understands it, and actively uh, uh, embraces and goes out and look for public information. Uh, finally, in terms of strengths, the Big Game Management Program has rapidly evolved and is currently evolving to adopt more sophisticated management planning, survey methodology, and population modeling. Those are some of the major strengths. Um, in conclusion, some areas that we believe uh, 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 display some weaknesses and, and could be improved. Biological surveys should be reassessed based on the time and expense of those surveys, the use of uh, that survey data, uh, the established protocol training and accuracy and precision of the data. Not all surveys are alike. Uh, some uh, are, are quite statistically valid, some are essential to making decisions, some are um, to be frank, some perhaps are, are, we've done it that way, it's interesting information, but it doesn't actually enter into the decision-making process. We just say, we would suggest you reassess those and, and make those decisions on your own. Uh, another weakness, management plans should be developed in concert with the public and the commission, we believe, and should contain measurable and time-specific uh, population objectives. Population modeling should continue to be improved. There's an, a, a quite a bit, well, the efforts within the department to develop population models, um, and we, we, would, uh, uh, we would suggest that more time, more effort, and more resources uh, uh, be put into that population modeling. Not as a, not as a, a, a replacement for surveys, uh, but as a way to uh, reduce time and expense, um, and, and provide more information for decision making. Uh, harvest management and license tag allocations, as I, I mentioned earlier, should be based on algorithms that allow adaptive management and provide a learning experience for managers from year to year. And finally, the final weakness that, that we highlight here in this presentation is department staff should improve internal communication 
um, and participatory management. Staff at all levels uh, in the chain of command m must understand leadership priorities, policy goals, uh, and objectives. The final overall conclusions, and Nathan actually referenced the, this first one, um, that there's a well-established big game management program uh, uh, here in South Dakota. It appears to, to meet the immediate needs of, of hunters, landowners, uh, and citizens of North Dakota, and there are notable improvements uh, uh, in that program. Uh, however, landscape scale land use changes in South Dakota, uh, increased public interest in wildlife programs, and increased complexity in meeting the demands of the public, not just in, here in South Dakota, but nationwide, uh, in our view, dictate a more sophisticated big game management system, and we hope, uh, uh, as you and the staff uh, review our report, that we provided some recommendations that uh, are meaningful and will assist in that continued uh, evolving uh, of the big game management program. Finally, and this is my final slide, uh, we would like to thank the Office of the Governor for logistical support and direction to conduct this review independently and objectively. We also would like to thank the Department of Game, Fish, and Parks, uh, the Commission the leadership of the agency and their staff for honest and open discussions and responses about the strengths and weaknesses of the, of the, the uh, programs we reviewed. And, and finally, and perhaps most importantly, we thank the citizens of the state of South Dakota who provided comments at public listening sessions uh, and to us through email uh, or, or regular mail. And with that, Madam Chairman, or Chair, I would uh, conclude and uh, entertain any questions you might have. All right, thank you so much. Questions? Okay. Steve, can you go back, um, I think, one slide to the uh, logarithms and explain to a kid that didn't do very well in math what you mean by... Uh, uh, algorithms? Well, by that bullet point, though. I, the, where we're talking about harvest, man harvest management licensing allocations to be based on algorithms yeah, that allow yeah. adequate uh, adaptive management. Um, what I mean by that, uh, John, is that, again, in, in our personal experience, when we're looking at a number of units, deer unit, deer management units. We take into account uh, uh, sex ratio information, age structure, um, you know, estimates of harvest, or estimate, ex, estimates of populations, uh, harvests, and then the license allocations that we, per, that we use for each unit. Do we achieve what we planned on achieving? We project what the harvest would be, bucks and does, and do we, have we achieved that? So we're always looking back to seeing, we put 100 licenses out there to make it simple. We achieved or didn't achieve uh, the harvest that, that we were looking for. Year to year, if that's structured in, a, in an equation or an algorithm or a model, it's probably a better term to use, you can learn that a 10% increase in, in permits didn't, make any, didn't have any effect or had a huge effect. I, we didn't see any evidence that that was going on, and, and I, I actually, that's not in the report, but looked at the percent changes in, in uh, permit types, license types, and the actual harvest, and couldn't find any relationship year to year to year, over a 10 year span, I should say. So um, adaptive management is all about uh, establishing objectives you wanna reach, taking steps to reach those objectives, going back and evaluating whether the steps you took allowed you to reach the objectives, and then a feedback loop that informs you for the next year. Uh, instead, what, what, what our, our interpretation was that at a local level, individual field staff and, and perhaps uh, you know, regional biologists and COs were sort of independently and somewhat subjectively, county by county by county, doing that, but without recording uh, why they made the decision for in 2008, how that affected the decisions they made in 2009, how it affected decisions in 2010. There was no obvious learning path 
uh, to us when, when, we had the, when we interviewed those folks. Are there any other questions at this time? Barry. Uh, yes. <coughs> uh, thank you. That was pretty in interesting information there. Um, one of the things I s struggle with setting here is what is the proper amount of information that should go back to the public in the decisions we make and, and all those things that enter into that. Do you ha have any comment on that? I, I do, Commissioner. Um, I don't have I don't have the right answer, but I I would comment on that. Um, and it, it it goes back to some of my earlier comments about using human dimension research, uh, and that capability is within the department uh, now, and and it has been for some time. I would suggest that um, uh, you look at designing some human dimension research that. Um, so you get an accurate uh, information from the public. Are you getting enough information from us? Are we providing you the feedback that you want? Not just you know, anecdotal at the, ca the cafe or wherever, but um, human dimension research can answer questions for you about how humans feel, how, how your constituents feel about the, in the information they're getting. Um, it, you can use uh, human dimensions research to improve conservation education, to improve public outreach. I mean, you're all trying to do your best and, and, and you're trying to fulfill your responsibilities. Um, but I, I, I would guess that this commission is no different than the other 49 or so that are in the state, in the country, um, uh, most of which have never really, in a scientific way, reached out to the public and said, are we providing you the information you need so you understand why we made these decisions? Um, you get late night phone calls, you, 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 know, you get letters and, um, and you respond to those things. Um, I'm not, I can't judge how effectively you do that right now, um, but I think you, know, you have the expertise uh, within the department to do that, to really evaluate uh, how well you're interacting uh, with your constituents, with the public. Yeah. Uh, if you want to let Scott add to that. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, uh, as was stressed in the, in the presentation multiple times, I think one of the first steps in that kind of communication back to the public is to engage the public and have this commission be engaged with the agency in establishing clear goals so that everybody at all the different levels from the public to the staff to the commission to the leadership are basically all on the same page. Then if you make a decision with that level of buy-in to the goal established up front, it is much easier to then communicate back to your public as to why you did what you did. So I, I think it's it's, it's not unheard of that some of those answers will become very apparent when you go through this process of designing your management plans and involving the public in those. Thank you. So, I might follow up. Uh, so on all these uh, species of uh, big game here, uh, I guess it would say to, that it would be appropriate first to set that goal number, whether it's whatever that number is. And or, or, yeah, or a range of numbers. Range of numbers. Right. And then develop a detailed management plan to maintain that range that includes hunting, research, public input, all of those sort of things. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then we need to communicate that back or have a follow-up, whether, whether we attained it or not, and what we learned from what we did. Is that kind of a simplified? I, I, that's a, a, an excellent explanation, yes. Okay. Okay. 
Are there any other questions? Thank you. You did a really good job. Well, thank you. And, and uh, Madam Chair, we have uh, a copy of, of the report for each of the commission. And I, and I understand that um, uh, Nathan has a the department will, uh, I believe, well, actually, I should, I'll, let, I'll let Secretary Vaughn reference what, how they want to distribute the report. So. Okay. Well, go ahead, Nathan. Madam Chair, again, Nathan yes. Sanders from the Governor's Office. I can maybe, that was what I was going to mention. Uh, right now, uh, a copy of the report should be available on the Game Fish and Parks website. Uh, if you go to the Game Fish and Parks homepage, as we have since the beginning of the uh, review, there's a link down on the bottom of the page to the Independent Review of Big Game Management. It has the request for proposals on there. It has the contract with WMI on there. It has the press releases that we've done. And then the final uh, report is on there as well. And if it hasn't already, uh, within the next five or so minutes, uh, there'll be a statewide press release to that effect. It might have already gone out. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you.